amidst all the work we do during the day and in the mornings, Father, that we could just come together and read together. And, and while we're here, we'll pray for Jan. She's getting on a plane and heading back from Denver to her husband, John, in Kansas City. They'll be picking her up at the airport tonight. So we continue to lift them up with travel mercies, driving mercies, and uh, we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for this group, and uh, thank you for the delegated yeah. authority, Lord. And here I hereby take my delegated authority, and I bind every single spirit that would attempt to take hold of any of our faculties. May yeah. they be completely bound. Uh, I lose, uh, this, I, I bind spirits of distraction, mind control, confusion, and I, and I lose godly wisdom, godly understanding, spirit of excellence, sound mind, power, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did you do the scriptures for this? I did. Okay. I kind of, I said to my wife, you were quiet this morning in the prayer group, so I figured you were preparing for this tonight. No, I actually did it yesterday. Oh, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah. Is this meeting only for brothers? It didn't indicate that. No, 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 no. My wife's okay. here. Oh, okay. No, no. We usually have Jan's usually here. Uh, Michelle, Avi's wife, She mm -hmm. she's not on screen, but she was before. Oh, okay. There she is. She's waving. Look. She's got her oh. work. Everybody's got their war on the Saints. Yeah. And, and if you need one, we'll make sure. So you I downloaded it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. The only thing is you'll have a hard time with the page references because it's different from the hardcover to the. Um, but All right, I'll just listen. We'll it's not a problem. Yeah, we'll figure it out because we'll just tell you, you know, the chapters. Like we'll be, hit, we'll be hitting. Actually, there's no scripture until we get into chapter 10 now, so. Little holiday. What? All right. Oh no, hang on. Page two twenty three. Yeah, there is. Okay. Yeah, two twenty three. There's uh, eight twelve. John eight twenty one. Acts. First uh, Corinthians nine to twenty five twenty seven. Oh yeah, up top there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all right. So uh, would anybody like to read? You want me to read? I'll read. I'll start because you're going to be doing most of the commentary. Evil, the counterfeit of the human spirit. I'll do this first page here. Just that, just that, that um, title, The Counterfeit of the Human Spirit. Can you believe that? Counterfeits everything. They, yeah, the devil counterfeits everything. And, and you know, it's amazing that they, they were able to pen what they actually experienced and saw back in 100. Think about it. Yeah. It's like 20 years ago. And, and to have the discernment to see it all happening and realizing and realize it and be able to discern it and then write it down. Right. And, and, and in words, some of them I don't understand, but that's okay. That's what we have you for. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank Evil you. spirits that seek to create a counterfeit of the spirit. And they do this by getting a footing in the person so as to produce other feelings than those of the spirit. There we go. That's why Worley was always saying that it's not a feeling. And, and here it is. It says, as to produce other feelings than those of the spirit, then when these get a hold, they become strong enough to silence or overpower the true spirit action or spiritual feelings. So it's such a counterfeit. It actually stops you from hearing that still small voice of God. And that's why you got to take every thought captive to the word of God, to the mind of Christ when you study. Or as I learned, sometimes we offend people, I myself included, and offending anyone can be a sin. Because if we look at Jesus, Jesus didn't let stuff fly out of his tongue. He kept it back, you know, no malice, no guile. And boy, <laughs> if you had a typewriter, you'd be snagging me all the time. Yeah, but no, except when he talked to the Pharisees. Yeah, well, he called them hypocrites. 
Yeah, and it would say, you are, you are of your father. <laughs> the devil. Yeah. Okay. And that shows you he knew what they were thinking. That's right. If the believer is ignorant of the tactics of the enemy in this way, he lets go the true spirit action or allows it to sink into disuse and follows the counterfeit spiritual feelings, thinking he is walking after the spirit all the time. Well, that's a lot to chew on right there. Any comments? Well, I'll bring it back to, you know, to where what we read a few pages ago, mm -hmm. to knowing where your spirit should be and knowing when it's being depressed or knowing when it's being pushed beyond its limits. If you see yourself getting anxious, you got to think, stop and go back into where your spirit is coasting on a, on a, on a level plane and in a good place. So you know that he would produce other feelings other than those of his spirit. Feelings that like could be above your normal spiritual, where your spirit's in a good place or below it. So these are the count, you know, they, well, it's not really counterfeits, but thinking that he's walking in the spirit all the time. Anyway, I, <clears throat> it actually doesn't have anything to do with counterfeit of the spirit, but I was just, I was thinking about it because of what happened today. Anyway, so, okay, go ahead. Okay, when the true spirit action ceases, the evil spirit suggests that God now guides through the renewed mind, which is an attempt to hide their workings and the man's disuse of his spirit. On the sensation of, the cessation of, the spirit cooperation with the Holy Spirit and counterfeit spirit, feelings taking place in the body, counterfeit light in the mind, reasoning, judging, etc. follows the man thus walking after mind and body and not after the spirit with the true illumination of the mind, which comes from full operation of the Holy Spirit. And I, I just want to say something there. When the Holy Spirit is our comforter and we're walking in the spirit, he only brings enlightenment all the time back to the Word of God. So, you know, he don't make mistakes. So that guess, first, go ahead. I was going to say that first sentence at the top of the page is quite interesting. Yeah, when the true when spirit ceases. Act, the evil spirit suggests that God now guides through the renewed mind. Yeah, that's like people that say they just got a thought from the Lord. And it really wasn't from the Lord. And that's how a counterfeit spirit can entertain us when that thought, it has nothing to do with the word of God. And so many people today, they, they, they don't use their own mind to make a decision. They think that they got to talk to God and they take the suggestive thought as God speaking. And sometimes it's the evil spirit getting us to look in another direction. Oh, counterfeit light, counterfeit light, uh, counterfeit reasoning, counterfeit judging. So, so when you get a thought, you've got to know the word to see if it's going, if it's going against the word in any way. Don't do it. It's the wrong reason. You're in trouble. It's counterfeit reasoning. It's counterfeit reason. I like that. Okay. True. Okay. Let me continue to roll here. To further interfere with the true spirit life, the deceiving spirits seek to counterfeit the action of the spirit in burden and anguish. This they do by first giving a fictitious divine love to the person, the faculty receiving it, being the affections. When these affections are grasped fully by the deceivers, the sense of love passes away, and the man thinks he has lost God and all communion with God. Boy, I see that happen a lot with people. And then they get angry with God. And let me highlight that. I need to restudy that a little more. Then follow feelings of constraint and 
restraint, which will develop into acute suffering, which the believer thinks is in the spirit and of God. Now he goes by these feelings, calling them anguish in the spirit. Let me highlight that. That's a key point. Groaning in the spirit, etc., while the deceiving spirits through the sufferings given by them in the affections compel the man to do their will. Wow. That's what oftentimes I say to someone I'm praying with, I say, fight him in the mind. Fight him in the mind. Don't let him take over your mind. Because once they get an inch of ground in us, you can fall into the snare of the temptation. And that's, that's with just about anything, especially when someone loses their, their, their uh, temperance and just goes into a rage. And I've been there, you know? And, and I, I probably say I, I've offended more people than I've been kind to in my walk. And, and I, I can thank God for that the Holy Spirit always makes me go back and apologize. But the best thing to do is to hold, hold our tongues so that we don't give yield to the spirit that's trying to bring us. That's why you've got to really think about what you say before you say it sometimes. And I'm looking at it here again today. Groaning in the spirit, etc., while deceiving spirits through the sufferings given by them in the affections compel the man to do their will. Anybody got another any other thought on this huge paragraph I just read? Okay, we're gonna go on. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, for the counterfeit spirits, you know how uh, there's a verse in the Bible that you're supposed to test the spirit? What? Yeah. Try the spirits to know if, yea, they are of God. Right, that one right there. That's so true. I think that the demons, these counterfeit spirits, can actually answer that question because you know how they do a legal attack that they're not supposed to do? Well, I think they do illegally answer that question as well. Well, if, what do you mean by that? Yeah, go ahead. What do you mean by that? Because we, in cause, cause in the Bible, in the Bible, it says if they don't admit, if they don't admit that Jesus Jesus came in the flesh, they're not of. Is that what? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying oh, that they I can admit. For, I, I, I know I think for sure they, that they can say that. I know. Huh? I've heard. I've, they sure. always. They know Jesus Christ is Lord. It's biblical. Right. It's biblical. Right. But when you when it's very biblical. Listen, there's scripture on it in Matthew when it says, "What do you what do you want from us, the man in the synagogue? What do you want from us, Jesus, O, o Holy One of God?" They're calling him God. They're right. admitting that it's. They know that he came. So that people misconstrue that. Yes, I agree. They they're very yeah, they really do. Yeah, they really do. Here, classic example was our sweet brother Calvin last week. His it took a long time before that demon finally came forth with truth out of its mouth to get expelled. Mm -hmm. and, and it's because we were relentless. Right. We were like a bunch of pit bulls. That's nice. That's what you need to do, unfortunately. Because well, like tonight, I was, watching, I was watching my husband. He's a non-believer. Okay. So I have pray for him. guidelines Never that... Yet. I have guidelines of what I'll watch. I won't listen to anything with swearing. So he watches Disney. So I'm watching this man walk by with his son, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'd be too tired to do that. And then I realized it was a play, another play thought, and then I heard from the Holy Spirit that it was, because they can go into your mind, and they can play thoughts to the point where you don't even know it's your, not your thought. You have There's to be- thousands. That's, that's, we were, yes. Yes, you have to discern exactly. every, you know, every thought. Time. Take well, everyone right. captive. It's That's easy. Right. And, and you pray over all things. You know, it took Steve teaching me to bind the enemy and the poison and the medication I was taking from my heart. And it went back to years ago when I was talking to a demon and he said, don't you know we put a little poison <laughs> in all pharmacia? Right. 
Well, I do. I take, I've been on chemo for four years. So uh, what I do is I bless it. I ask God to sanctify it. I ask him to bless it. I bind, ask him to bind any negative properties, enhance any good properties. And then I tell him, Lord, I know that, that you're keeping me alive, that it's not this pill. That's right. And I, and I ask you to please keep multiloma and poem syndrome at bay because I know it's you, Lord, and I thank you for it. And if he was ever to tell me not to take it after much discernment and prayer and fasting, then I would consider it. But until then, I'm taking it. We're going to get back on topic here, but just Sorry. real quickly, real quickly, I'll just give you a little tidbit here. If you if you're walking down the street and you hear somebody swearing, mm -hmm. and you don't, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to say it to him. If you don't say, if you don't say, I don't agree with that, and you just let it come into your ears without disagreeing with it you're giving grounds how's that one well then i give me a lot of grounds because everybody in my family swears well there you go just uh, as you and go my ahead, brother so swears the one who said i don't agree with that, that was cursed he talks to me and he swears like a son of a gun and well just say to yourself i don't agree with it That's okay so i don't have to say it to him then no oh okay good thank you thank you you're not, you don't want to give the enemy ground sure. in you That's that's passivity. You understand? That's if you let it go into your ear without stating your disapproval, right? You're allowing passivity, you're allowing grounds by mm -hmm. passivity. Good. So, uh, so it's an easy thing. And if you hear somebody swearing, or even if it's on TV, somebody swears on TV, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Whenever you hear somebody using the Lord's name in vain, I don't agree with that. Just say it. Just say it, or even think it. I can think it. That's what I'll do because my you know family. You know, right. and, and you know what I do? I tell people, why are you cursing God when he allows you to breathe? Yeah. The thing is, I'm not sure whether you could just think it or say it. Because remember something. <laughs> remember something. That they're not in you yet. They're not, they haven't got the grounds. They're, they're waiting for that passive state. So oh, I'm not sure if... They're you know, in me. They're in me. Not, well, I know they're in you, but I'm saying, I'm saying the ones that are trying to gain ground to get right. it. Mm -hmm. So they're out. So I, I always, I always like a proclamation. Okay. Amen. She's Amen. Two. We're back on topic. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because Kim, you're in our prayer group. You're in our a war in the saints, and you have plenty of time to fellowship with us. We meet every day. That's yep. why. Okay. We're, we're, that's why we're going to go back and read chapter four again once we're, we're going to read chapter four again before we get started from the beginning again <laughs> but we, yeah we're going to start again from the beginning the only thing i'm going to do this time differently is uh allow us to take a little break at one point after we do it just to give us a break for a couple of weeks because we have a, everything's being recorded and we have to edit, and, and there's a whole process and the thought pattern on why Steve and myself got together and decided we wanted to do this, for everybody to be able to come in and be part of it, and, and you, understand that this book is a hard book for an individual mm -hmm. to read on their own, you know, mm -hmm. but when you have a, a, a companion, a spouse that's in agreement, like my wife and me, we just laid in bed at night, not watching TV, but reading more on the saints. And so you know, there's, there's good this is, is this being put on YouTube? Well, not, not yet, but we're going to put the. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to okay. know. So we're on at all physical consciousness. Is that it? Yeah. You want to go keep going? Go. Is anybody, Jason, you want to read? Jason said he's just going to sit back and listen to me. Okay, that's all right. Just giving him the opportunity. I haven't heard him in weeks. I'm yeah, thank to... you, Pastor. I'm uh, I'm kind of slightly out of commission, but thank you so and, much. Uh, you don't have to be out of commission. You're part of the kingdom of God. We we pray great for you commission. every day. The Great Commission. Yeah, we pray for you every day, Jason. God knows. So, okay, so... All so physical you... consciousness of supernatural things and even undue consciousness of natural things should be refused. There you go. You just told her that. If you're hearing other people in the natural cursing, you got to refuse it. Yep. Otherwise, you give them ground to passivity. Occupy. Passivity. Passivity. So many Christians have that going on. But anyway, let's go back to this. It should be refused as this diverts the mind from walking after the spirit 
and says it upon the bodily sensations. Physical consciousness is also an obstacle to the continuous concentration of the mind. And in a spiritual believer, an attack of physical consciousness made use by the enemy may break the concentration of the mind and bring a cloud upon the spirit. Oh, that's important. I mean, I got to take a moment here and highlight that. Yeah, so you can think of it in, in, in different ways. You can think of it as, as good feelings, as good sensations, elation, whatever, or pain. You know, if they suddenly give you a pain, boom, that takes your mind away from... Takes your mind away from everything, but that's where you learn You learn how to pray. I bind that spirit behind the pain. Amen. Father, I thank you for healing right now. I thank you that that demon is bound up, and I'm not going to go for a painkiller. I'm not reaching for the Tylenol. You I'm know, I do it, I, I do it right to the point now. where I say, I refuse the grounds. I don't care if bone on bone is supposed to give pain. I refuse that. And you know what? The arthritis starts leaving. <laughs> so, you know, you just refuse, refuse, refuse. Like I said to Amy. Here, listen to what it says after. It says, the cloud upon the spirit. It says, the body should be kept calm. Whoa. Under full Whoa. control. And under full control. Here, excessive laughter should be avoided. Toronto blessing. Mm -hmm. Holy laughter. Or on the saints says, Un should be avoided. I watched a deliverance minister say Toronto blessing was of God once. And I said, where is his discernment? He's never read a good spiritual book that exposes the things that the demons do. When they're barking like dogs, talking back and forth in tongues and nobody's interpreting, it is totally demonic. And, and, and so many people flock to that. They, they go after the sensationalism of the physical attribute of what the demons are doing. And they think it's God. Well, we read. Here, let me finish this. Then you can okay. take over. Excessive laughter should be avoided. And all rushing, which rouses the physical life to the extent of dominating the mind and the spirit. Believers who desire to be spiritual and of full age in the life in God should avoid access extravagance and extremes in all things there he goes steve read the scripture where is it Hang first on. corinthians 9 25 26 27 and every man that striveth for mastery is a temperate is temperate in all things now they now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible Amen. i therefore so run not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, we've read the scripture before. A lot of people use that as a, you can use, lose your salvation thing. I should be a castaway. Well, castaway means an, uh, a bad example. That's what, when you look it up in Strong's, I actually got Strong's right here. I'm not going to go looking for it. But it means like, you know, uh, a bad example, pretty much. That's what it means. Because of the domination of the physical part of the man and an emphasis placed upon supernatural experiences in the body, the body is made to do the work of the spirit and forced into a, a prominence which hides the true spirit life. It feels the pressure, feels the conflict. This becomes the sense instead of the spirit. And that's where Kundalini takes over. Even in these modern churches, when they see all the shaking going on and the manifestations, it's all physical. Got nothing to do with spiritual brothers and sisters. Hold on to that. So, so the, the, if you look at sports, 
you know, they're all yelling and screaming and go, go, that's go, go, the go. Some part of it. It's the same thing that's flowed over into the church. The same, it's the same spirit. Mm, mm. Good, good observation there. And you're pretty new to deliverance, but God's teaching you. Mm, 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 Feel mm. the conflict. First of all, Sports didn't come into the picture the way we see it today. Football, basketball, boxing, wrestling. It was all pagan and heathen before Christ, and then the spirits ain't changed. It was killing and all that. They're more, they're, oh, they were, they were the gladiators. People, the gladiators. And that was a blood sport. And, and, and here, here it just... Just stand with me a minute. I watched a 14-year-old have a 290-pound high school guy nail him this week. I heard the story. He's out for the season. Wow. You know, I said to my son, I said, we need to pray for God's protection on your, your child. You know, you got him out there, and you're, you're just driving him to play this game morning, noon, and night. That's not God, you know. It's not God at all. But you know, you can't tell people that are not walking in the spirit how the enemy operates. And only pray for them. And there's there's so many multitudes. It's like someone came to me at church the other day and said, "Wow, the churches today they're even wearing their favorite football players' jerseys to church." And you know. That's crazy. And this insanity that's going on in our world today. But it says, which hides the true spirit life, feels the pressure, feels the conflict, thus becomes the sense instead of the spirit. Believers do not perceive where they feel. If they are questioned as to where they feel, they cannot answer. They should learn to discriminate and know how to discern the feelings of the spirit. I got to, that's important. I got to highlight that so I can always come back to that when I'm trying to feed the sheep and teach them a little about the enemy and what the enemy does to all of us. And it says here, this is what it says here in closing. It says, which are neither emotional, in other words, soulish or physical, and then they, and, and they give us the scriptures in the Bible to cross-reference what they're telling us here. See the example in Mark 8, 12. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall be no sign given unto this generation. So he sighed deeply in his spirit. All right, John 8, 21. 1321, isn't it? Yeah, 13. I'm sorry. I, I, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. So he was troubled in spirit. So, see, like we said last week, Steve, Steve, you said it. Jesus had to think. His own spirit, he was troubled. Discerning and, and had a he had man's spirit in him because he had to take the appearances man to take take his body to the cross to redeem us. He was as a man. He had this will. Yes. He had a brain. He, he had a head that was on. Two hey, stars. he had to sleep. They woke him up from sleep when he was rebuking you know, the storm. Yeah, or he he hungered after he got after he was forty days. Yeah. Absolutely, Acts. 15, 18, Acts 18, 18, 18 5, five. No. five, yeah. 18.5. AV's name's in here. And when, and when Silas and T uh, Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Amen. So pressed in the spirit, felt he had to go forward, pressed. And, you know, I'll, I'll take us back real quickly to 219 just for a sec. The spirit depressed or crushed down. Number two, the spirit in its right position in poised, calm control. 
and three, the spirit is drawn out beyond poise when it is in strain or driven or in flight. So there's different levels of how your spirit uh, will operate and you have to remember where it is in its good spot. In other words, number two, the spirit in its right position in poise and calm control. Wow. All right. So some, go ahead, some descriptions of the spirit. Yeah, I'll finish this and then you can start 10. All right. We got time. I don't even know what time it is. But no, we got time. It's good. Lots of time. Some descriptions of the spirit. The spirit may be likened to the electric light. If the man's spirit is in contact with the spirit of God, it is full of light. Apart from him, it is in darkness. And that explains why we can see light in people and why we can see darkness in people. You know, it's either one or the other is operating within a person's soul. Indwelt by him, the spirit of man is called the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Wow. The spirit may also be likened to elastic, when it is bound or pressed or weighted, it ceases to act or to be the source of power and spring, so to speak, in the light. If a man feels weighted, he should find out what the weight is. If he's asked, is it your body? He will probably say no, but that he feels bound inside. Then what is it that is bound or weighted? Is it not the spirit? The spirit can be compressed or expanded up or down, in or out of place, bound or free. That's why when God does something good, the person that's receiving the grace knows it and praises God. The possibilities and potentialities of the human spirit are only known when the spirit is joined to Christ and united to him is made strong to stand against the powers of darkness. That's why if, if God be for you, who could be against you? When you're walking in the light of God's word, it's very difficult for the enemy to operate. The great need of the church is to know and understand the law of the spirit. That's so darn important in our spiritual life is that the body of Christ needs to learn the spiritual warfare and where we fail and where we would succeed if we put application of the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, into the very essence of our lives. It says the great, yeah, I'm going to read this again. The great need of the church is to know and understand the laws of the Spirit so as to co-work with the Spirit of God in fulfilling the purpose of God through his people. That's why we can't do nothing apart from him. But the lack of knowledge, my people perish for lack of knowledge, the lack of knowledge of the spirit life has given the deceiving spirits of Satan the opportunity for the deceptions, plural, of which we have spoken in the previous pages of the book. And that's why brothers and sisters that come into our fellowship and they come into even the reading of Warren of Saints, if they're not actively studying and reading when they're not here, it's just a bunch of babble to them because they're not keeping up. You got to read the book and read the book and read the book until it makes a connection in your spirit to line you up with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And unless you know the enemy, you can read the Bible all day long and not know about how the enemy operates because God gives us Brothers and sisters with their testimonies, that's all this book is about, is what they learned when they were praying, fasting, meeting together, serving God. We are in great need of revival in this country right now. And it's only going to get there one way, God's way. 
Man's way don't work. What did Worley say? Worley called the Bible a book of warfare. That's all it is. It's a war book. Most people think it's just a love story. It's a war book. And the devil doesn't want us preaching the word of God with all the ammunition and walking in the faith to say, hey, let me pray with you. Do you got a few hours? No, I'm busy. I got to live in the world. I got to go make money. I got to do this. I got to do that. You don't get no blessing in heaven for what you're doing with your life on earth if you're not winning souls and serving the one that died for you. Oh, I'm not just so fired up tonight because God is good all the time. And this is such a precious read. All right, let's try and get a couple, few more pages in. Yeah, I'm sorry. 20 minutes. Oh, you know, here, it's all good. Yeah, okay, here we go. Chapter 10. Now it gets interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all been interesting, but now it's really, now you're, now, now victory in conflict. Now comes the fight. Now the war begins. And you're going to see, it's going to say the same theme over and over. Refuse, refuse, refusal. Don't accept. Keep refusal, neutral stance. Truth, deception, it's, all, it's always the same theme. You're going to see. So here we go, victory and conflict. In a previous chapter, we have seen the way of deliverance from possession by evil spirits. The great question here, here is how to be victorious over the powers of darkness as a whole. How to have authority, yes. How to have authority and victory over the wicked spirits in place of the mastery over the believer who having learned the devices of the enemy and the way of deliverance is now deeply concerned that others should be set free and brought into the place of victory over all the power of the enemy. Right. For this, he must now understand that the degree of Christ's authority, the spirit of God will energize him to exercise over the spirits of evil will be according to the degree of victory he has over them in the personal conflict. Personal conflict, that's right. Which he must now settle down to face in the sphere of spiritual life into which he has emerged. Any comments? That's a whole lot of word right there. Right there is a lot. In other words, the, your degree of, of, of Christ's authority. That's right. And, it, and it's based upon getting that plank out of your own eyes so that you can help others. And it's, it's also based on what you know in this book. This yes. one. This that's one. Bible, man. That's where you're going to know your You're going to excel. You're going you're gonna to fast for people. And then your healing is going to yeah. come about. That's when you're going to now understand the degree of Christ's authority. When you when you can go and say, hey, listen, remember the other day you got no power. Or what was he saying? Hey, hey listen, it is written. <laughs> All it, power. <laughs> it is written. It is written. That's you just gotta say that. I didn't write it, demon. Guess who wrote it? <laughs> um, okay, degrees of deliverance and victor and victory. Now remember, degrees, levels. The believer needs to have thorough knowledge and understanding of their ways and works and the laws of the spirit and how to keep in mastery of spirit in all the vicissitudes. Somebody oh, want to look up you know, vicissitudes. Somebody want to look that up? Oh, I, I did and I forgot what it means. Hold now. on. I'm going to get it. Go. You keep going. I think, no, wait, no, no rush. I think it means at it's, uh, all aspects. We'll see in a second. Here we go. Vicissitudes, meaning. Here we go. Aspects. A change of circumstances or fortune, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Did you hear it? Yeah. Said a change of circumstances or fortune, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Hmm. Not what I thought it meant. Her husband's sharp vicissitudes of fortune. Alternation 
between opposite or contrasting things. It's okay. a descendant of the Latin noun visus, meaning change or alternation. Okay, so the change in all the changes of life. Let's put it that way. The believer needs to have thorough knowledge and understanding of their ways and works and the laws of the spirit and how to keep in mastery of the spirit in all the changing things of his life. life right? Yeah. right? As there are, number one, degrees of deception Perception. and degrees of possession and deliverance from possession, there are, so there are, number two, degrees of victory over the devil. That's you. Number three, degrees, degrees of temptation and victory over temptation. The power to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in the wielding of Christ's authority will also be in degrees and gained according to the aggressive spiritual strength obtained by overcoming the devil in his various workings. So, you know, that's little by little. Yeah, but once you get to a certain point, you know you have victory, and you know you can stand on God's word. You walk in it. Yeah, and you, you, there's no, you know, they can't take that from you once you know it. You know, the deception of 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 you not having the power over it. Maybe I did something wrong. Or, so we do nothing. The battle is the Lord's, right? So, well, so all we have to know is remember that. Just remember who's who's got our rear word, as it says in Isaiah. 58 8 the lord's got our rearward his glory so you know all that's all we have to know and then and then you know that's once you get to that degree they cannot stand against you okay just as victory over sin deepens in its strength as the man overcomes temptation to sin and victory over the world first john five Four and five, and I know that one pretty well, but I'm going to read it. Who is it that overcomes the world? By the word of their testimony. Um, First John five, verse four and five. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And who's in the world? Overcometh the devil. So for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith, and that's it. It's that simple. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. So that's our testimony right there. They came, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their, tes their testimony. Lovely. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So 1 John 4, 5 is increasingly known by faith in the Son of God. These degrees of overcoming power with the consequent degree of reward are to be clearly seen in the Lord's call to the churches recorded in the apocalypse. Degrees also of the future authority in the reigning with Christ are indicated in his words in one parable. Be thou ruler over 10 cities, over five. And that's in Luke 19, 17 to 19. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful, in a very little, thou um, have the in in a very little have thou authority over ten cities, and the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds, and he said likewise to him, Be thou over five cities. The believer delivered from deception and possession by the evil by the spirits of evil must now learn to walk in personal victory over the devil at every point. Mm. That's why that's why Warley laughed. <laughs> yeah. If he, he is to have fullest victory it. over the powers of darkness. So you have to learn to walk in personal victory over the devil at every point. And that you know and that literally means discerning every thought. That's we know that. If he is to have fullest victory over the powers of darkness. For this, just as he needs uh, to know the Lord Christ in all aspects of his name and character, so as to, sorry, one more time. For this, just as he needs to know the Lord Christ in all the aspects of his name and character, so as to draw upon his power in living union with him, so the believer must learn to know the adversary in his various workings, as described in his names and character, that he may be able to discern his presence 
and all his wicked spirits, wheresoever they may be, either in attacks upon himself, in others, or working as world rulers in the darkness of the world. Any comments? Doesn't get any closer than that. Look at yeah, what it's like. Here. It's like you know. In there, there's that word discern. Right. And when the thought comes, the look where to watch. Listen to where to or or look where the thought's taking you, and then you can real pretty much sense where it's coming from. When something takes you really quick, from you look at one thing and all of a sudden you go bing bang boom, and you're you're miles away and it's going negative. You know it's of the devil. They usually when when things your, when your thoughts go from one thing to another that fast, it's usually the devil. So victory over Satan as a tempter. Victory over the devil as a tempter and all his temptations, personally, direct and indirect, must be learned by the believer in experimental reality. reality. Experimental reality. We're to try things. We're to... You know, I mean, yes. Get also, tested. Yeah. Remembering that all temptations are not recognizable as temptations, nor are they always visible, for half their power lies in being hidden. Wow. Wow. Just as Eve in the, in, in the garden. He, 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 he disguised that rebellion, that sin, into be, making it look like something good that, that Eve would be pleasing God. Right? A believer thinks that he will be as conscious of the approach of temptation as a person coming into the room. Hence, the children of God are only fighting a small proportion of the devil's workings. That is, only what they are conscious of as supernatural workings of evil. That's a lot right there, too. Yeah, because it tells you more next. Because of their knowledge of the devil's character and methods of working is limited and circumscribed, many true children of God only recognize temptation when the nature of the thing presented is visibly evil and according to their limited knowledge of evil so that they do not recognize the tempter and his temptations when they come under the guise of natural or physical or lawful and apparent good. So you can really get duped. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think it's God and it ain't. It's the enemy. When the prince of darkness and his emissaries come as angels of light, they clothe themselves in light, which uh -huh. in their case stands for evil. It is a light which is really darkness. Wow. They come in the guise of good. Darkness is opposed to light. Ignorance is opposed to knowledge. Falsehood is opposed to truth. Darkness is a term applied to evil morality and moral darkness. The believer may need to discern evil spirits in the realm of the supposed good. That which comes to one, them as one, one more time. One more time. The believer may need to discern evil spirits in the realm of the supposed good. So you can do good at the wrong time and it's going to be evil. No. What it's saying uh, here basically uh, is you have to discern if, because Satan will present you with sometimes with the, with the good or the great, the, the lesser or the greater to get to where he wants to go. Now, let me just give you a quick, quick example. Okay. Uh, about a year ago, I was asked to go back on the road. Yeah. And we spoke about, you know, I said, well, you know, maybe if I just did went and did a bit, I'd be able to go and I'd be able to say into the microphone, Jesus Christ is Lord, or say something that would just get one person, you know. But meanwhile, it was the devil coming at me, trying to get me to get back into that milieu. And I was thinking, how could I use it? You know, I was, the thoughts that were coming to my mind were, how could I use this to, to further the kingdom of God? When in reality, that was the devil putting that idea in my mind. Because what I was shown after was I could get, I could just as easily get a woman standing at a cash in a store to profess her faith than I could plant a seed in front of, by playing in front of 10,000 people. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that which comes to them as light may be light. Okay, for instance, where are we there? Oh, yeah. Now we're at the apparently good may really be evil. Right. Yeah. Next, next sentence, Steve. The apparently good may be really evil. The apparent help of which they cling to may be really a hindrance. Wow. And it gives you a look up uh, page 75 for those who want to do it. For instance, a difficulty in work may arise out of accepting a degree of weakness, which is really the result of demon possession. So while desiring strength, the believer may fulfill conditions which make him weak. The devil then tempts him because he is weak and he succumbs. There needs to be a choice between good and evil perpetually by every man. Wow. So that that just shows that it's a constant war. Every single decision. Every wow. single decision. You know, you got to pretty much, pretty much. And he uses Ezekiel to bring it forth here. They use, well, well go to Ezekiel. Romans 6.16. No, they know ye not that uh, who ye choose, who ye serve, yep. you are you are the servant of, you know, servants unto sin or servants unto righteousness. So that's what it is. You gotta. That's why you gotta reason, reason every single decision. Think about it. Where is that gonna take me? Where where am I going with this? To know if you're going, if it's good or, or bad. And Ezekiel forty four. And they shall teach my people the difference, 4423. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. Profane. And cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Right. And look look what it says about the church now. This is 120 years ago. Yet is the church of Christ today able to thus discern what is good and what is evil? Does she not continually fall into the snare of calling good evil and evil good? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's amplified today. They stuck that one in the marshal and turned it up to 10. Yeah. <laughs> because of the thoughts of God's people are governed by ignorance and limited knowledge, they call the works of God of the devil and the works of devil of God. And they are not taught the need of learning to discern the unclean the need of learning to discern now get this. we know that discernment comes from three places as a gift from god from experience and from learning either from spoken words from a, from learned brothers from from anointed brothers or from things that were written such as this book war on the saints that's you know learn called to discern learning to discern they're not taught the need of learning to discern the difference between the unclean and the clean, nor how to decide for themselves what is of God or what is of the devil. Although they are unknowingly, and get the word, compelled, unknowingly compelled to make a choice every morning, more, every moment of the day. Wow, they're being driven. Yeah. So you have to, you know, unknowingly compelled. You got to make a choice. There's choices. There's <laughs> You turn right, you turn left. You got to even think about that sometimes, you know? If you're, if you're, if you're turning, so, oh, no, I'm going to go this way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is thought. why what we keep talking about, about God gives us our own will. Listen to what it says in the end here, this, this little. Uh... Neither do all believers know that they have a choice between good and good. There, I was speaking about it earlier. Example, the lesser and the greater good. And the devil all often entangles, entangles them. Yeah. You see, you see, that's, that's exactly what that is. When you have, you make a choice and you go, well, maybe I can do this. It's going to, it's going to do this. When in reality, it's the devil's giving you that choice. And it's, and it's, you're a falling step, right into the web. It's a step to a greater, a greater victory for him or a greater, how would I put it? A, a step to a, a, a bigger means for him. Various kinds of temptation. There are unseen temptations and temptations in the unseen. Physical temptations, soulish temptations, spiritual temptations, direct 
and indirect temptations, as with Christ when he was directly tempted in the wilderness or indirectly through Peter. The believer must not only resist the devil when he tempts visibly or attacks consciously, but by constant prayer, he must bring to light his hidden and covered temptations. Ooh. This is good. Constant prayer. So you have to, here, and what does it say? And bring to light. So you ask, Lord, give me, please show me what oh, I need to be shown. Show me, give me light on this. You're going to pray for that, you're going to get it. No, uh, okay, cover temptations. Knowing that he is a tempter and therefore is always planning temptation for the believer. Nonstop. Nonstop. Those, by who, those who thus by prayer bring to light these hidden workings are by experience widening their horizon in knowledge of his work as a tempter and becoming better able to, co to co-work with the Spirit of God in the deliverance of others from the power of the enemy. Once again, that you see word, how this book fits hand in hand yeah. with the word of God. Once again, that word experience is there. Notice that. Right. For in order to be victorious over the powers of darkness, it is essential to be able to recognize what they are doing. Absolutely. How are you going to know your enemy if you, if you can't recognize? He could be standing right in front of you. If you don't know him, they say that all the time. We're in Christians and they don't even acknowledge we're there. <laughs> it is essential to recognize what they are doing. Paul, on one occasion, did not say circumstances, but said Satan hindered me. That's right. He knew. He knew. He knew. Yeah. First Thessalonians 2 verse 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. That's right. Satan hindered them. And they were true believers and they were being attacked. Because he was able to recognize when circumstances or the Holy Spirit or Satan hindered or restrained him in his life. Acts 16, 16. verse 6. Now, and here, this shows you. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia, Phrygia, and the region of Galatia, they were and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost kind of like stopped them, quickened them to, to, to let them know, guided them that they shouldn't go and preach. So it could be the Holy Ghost, it could be Satan, it could be the Holy Ghost stopping you, or it could be circumstances. <laughs> but usually it's it's either, who's going to stop you? It's going to be either Satan or it's going to be God. Uh, or Satan hindered him and restrained, in, restrained him in his life and service. There are degrees also in the results of temptation. After the wilderness temptation, which settled vast and eternal issues, the devil left Christ. But he returned to him again and again with other degrees of temptation. <clears throat> John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. For this cause, uh, for this cause came I unto this hour. And um, uh, Matthew twenty two fifteen. 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel on how they might entangle him in his talk. Differences between temptation and attacks. There is also a difference between the temptations and attacks of the tempter. As may be seen again in the life of Christ, temptation is a scheme or a plot or compulsion on the part of the tempter to cause another to do evil, whether consciously or unconsciously. But an attack is an onslaught on the person, either in life, character, or circumstances. Example, the devil made an onslaught on the Lord through the villagers 
when they sought to hurl him over the brow of the hill. Luke 4, 29. Where is that? Uh, and, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Well, that didn't happen, did it? <laughs> when his family brought a charge of insanity against him in Mark 3, 21. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said... He is beside himself. Right. And when he was charged with demon possession by his enemies, John 10, 20. And many of them said, he hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? And Matthew 12, 24, which says, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth cast, not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Temptation, moreover, means suffering, as we see again in the life of Christ, where it is written, he suffered being tempted. Yep. Hebrews 2.18. And Hebrews 2.18 says, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Now you see, right here, I looked this up because when you look in the archaic, and I have it actually up here. Hang on a second. The word suffered to suffer, now is experience, could be bad or unpleasant, could be pain, ache, to be in pain, feel pain. But in the archaic, when you look at the, the definition, it says to tolerate, to put up with, to stand, to endure. So, you know, when I, look, when I first read Hebrews 2.18, I thought to myself, he suffered it. I mean, he allowed himself to be tempted. That being said, I went and looked up in Strong's, and I remember something. Strong's is also, they're translating Greek words, and, it's, and there's different words that are used, so it's also different people's opinions. It does say pain in the translation. It's one of the words used for the translation. So I leave it up to everybody to make their own decision on this, if it's used out of context or if it's proper. I myself have taken a neutral stance on it. <laughs> Temptation, moreover, means suffering as we again in the life. And you know what? To be tempted, and to, it can be a suffering. It can be a physical suffering. Right. It's, it's, you know, to be tempted, I mean, you know, oh, I can't take it anymore. I can't, you know what I mean? So, you know, to what degree they're talking about it being painful and in what sense, it's not necessarily physical pain they're talking about. Temptation, moreover, means it's suffering. So, yeah. yeah. Temptation, moreover, means suffering, as we see again in the life of Christ, for it is written, he suffered being tempted. And believers must not think they will reach a period when they will not feel the suffering of temptation, as this is a wrong conception, wow. which, gives, which gives grounds to the enemy for tormenting and attacking them without cause. So there you go. That says it all right there in that, that chapter in, at the end here. That this is a continual war. Yeah, it's we are. We know we're going to be persecuted for His name's sake. So, you know, we know that we are going to suffer. That being said, when it says here He suffered being tempted, I think it's anyway. Like I said, it means in the in the old archaic, it means tolerate or whatever. So you know, you take it the way you want. Um, Suggestion. Yeah. Time to stop. Okay, you're right. You are right. We did a solid hour, and that's after our Maloney Fellowship in the beginning. And so, okay, good. 229, we actually covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we got eight pages in almost. Yeah. And it was pretty thorough. Very good tonight. Wow. Yeah, now it shows you all we're coming up on here. Two pages from now, believers should maintain neutrality. Yeah. You know, uh, that's, where, that's where you got that old thing going. I got to look at my old book. 
and see if I ever highlighted that. I'm yeah, but it's, not, it's like all over the place. I mean, just for fun, let's look up and, you know, we're gonna, before we say goodbye and before we get into like just fooling around, yeah. I want to look up neutrality in the, in the topical index and just see yeah, how, many, how many pages it's on. How many pages it's on. I got one of them and I never look at it. 24, 59, 140, 147, 231, and 235. Not as much as I thought. Yeah, but wait a minute. I want to see. Hey, Mike. Yeah. I don't even know where my other one is. It's here somewhere. So, so 229, prayer bringing hidden temptations to light will be our starting point next week. Uh, yes. I'm highlighted. Steve. Yeah. You'd be proud of me. Look. This is the new book since oh, wow. I switched books. But it's like, look at this. I'll be able to hand this to someone and bless them. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, read what's highlighted. You're yeah, right. <laughs> I've gotten now I'm I got this uh page by page uh topical um not not the, not like they do it by the word, but I'm doing it by by the page. So I'm gonna and I'm going back. Where did it go? It's around here somewhere. Anyway, um, I've hey, got Calvin, pretty good tonight, eh? Yeah, I sure was. Very edifying. Yeah, well, you're now you're back home where? California. Yeah, I'm in California, Southern California, in Hemet. How's Gene doing? You keeping in touch? <sighs> Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Uh, you can see I'm yawning. I'm tired. Yeah, I was about to tell you that he went to sleep when I, after I woke up, uh, woke up at like around five in the morning to, to go back home. It's like a four hour drive. Uh huh. And I told him that I, I texted him. I was like, uh, I was, I came back home at eleven. And then he said that he went to sleep back at, at seven and occasionally he takes naps here and there, but yeah. Wow, you look really mellow. You look like it was a good trip for you with him for a month. Praise God. Yeah, it sure was. You know, it's nice to see different things and learn different things from my fellow brother. Um what was I going to say? Are you using a hard copy or are you using the, the PDF? Um, oh, yeah, to get a PDF. Uh, I don't have a hard copy. Okay, so let me just list something up here. Yeah, Gene showed you those um, those proclamations there? I think so. Um, you gave me some prayers to say and stuff like that. Yeah, let me, um, let me see if I can find the page. I think it's in Chapter 9. Let me just find it for you. I think it's on oh. 121, if I'm not mistaken. Boy, my little brother, Jared, boy, he's he's busy. I love it. He's got a smile on his face, Steve. Yeah, I know. Two months of being in fellowship, going to some conferences. He said he got rid of the screamer. The screamer is gone, yep. eh? Yes. Hallelujah. Yep. Glory to God. Did it scream as it left? <laughs> Did it no. say bye? Did it say bye? <laughs> no. Bye bye. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> They're going to be crispy soon enough. Yeah. They're going to retire in the lake of fire. <laughs> we um, gotta, it's Steve. You got to write a song. Oh, I've been, th I've been working at it, you know. Okay, good. We gotta You're going to tell you, you know, <clears throat> here comes your bath in God's wrath, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of to believe me. I was going on it because I, because I, you know, when that when when I get something bothering me in my mind, I go, oh yeah, just remember, and I start, and I use that as a time, you know, to start, you know, to start coming up with lines, and I start laughing. It's it's really funny. Now you know why Win laughed all the time. I'm looking for the for the proclamations. I know on the. Uh, it doesn't matter. Hey, Calvin, we're going to work at getting them laminated. I was supposed to get to the printer today. 
I did send her the text and forwarded her what you sent me, Steve. So I'm sure she got it. And if I give her the green light, she'll print them and we'll have them before the conference, before they get together on the weekend. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, that's, um, that's gonna be a good thing to have. Oh yeah. Is this it, the one on the Sword of the Spirit? Is no. no. What does it say? It says a sword of spirit. Whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be delivered. No, that's those are those are verses. Those are oh, verses. okay. Never mind. Uh, shall call the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Um, no, it's uh, I refuse this. I refuse that. I refuse all help from evil spirits. I refuse the touch of evil spirits. I refuse uh, suggestions from evil spirits. I refuse to pray to evil spirits. It's a whole list of refusals, proclamations with couple of things added at the end. Um, I, I believe I, let me just look to see if I sent them to Gene. And if, and if I did, you could just ask him, say, uh, send me those things that Steve sent you. Either that, or if I had, give, give Steve your email, we'll send them to you. He sent them to me yesterday, two days ago. Sure, it's, um, you wanna write it down? No. I'm what, gonna send it to you right now. My phone number? Yeah, I could give you guys my phone number too. Uh, one sec, one sec, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just send it right now. Hang on. I'm going to send it right now to you and just go to the website to get my number so we can keep abreast with you. Okay, give me it. Okay, uh, my email is uh, Kelvin, K E L. Well, yeah, you can already see my name. Fern, F E R N, and the number is seven. Hang on. F E R N. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, at uh, no, no, wait, sorry, Hang on, number seven, or, yeah, number seven at gmail.com. At... Yeah, Kelvin Fern seven <laughs> at gmail.com. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, you already did the curse breaking, you don't need that one. I'll mm -hmm. give you um, the proclamations. Mind you, never hurts to have the prayer to give it to somebody else if they need it, uh, but desktop. Uh, oh, I was just trying to hold on to say goodnight, man. Um, what did I do with it? <laughs> Deliverance warfare verses, no. Directions to Pastor Charles' house, no. <laughs> You know what, I'll get it to you after. I'm gonna look. Uh, I have the the, the um, email ready to go. I'll just minimize right. it. When I get off here, I'll look. All right, that sounds cool. Here, let me, uh, and I'll say, add to contact. So I got you now. All right, I'll get it to you after. When we get off here. Thank you very much in advance. And that's it. So, um, who's on here? Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara's been in here for a while. Tim? Tim is from Shreesport, Louisiana. Brother Tim. Yeah, I know. And uh, ah. that's about it. So, shaking some spiders. Oh, well, it's kind of, we're on the early side tonight. Yeah. Normally we got to get out of here sometimes 10 o'clock, blabbing and blabbing and all that. Jason's gone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's working 12 hours a day, 12 days in a row. <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Some people got to be in the world. We were there for a long time. Remember, he's a little younger than us. Yeah. Look at look at our little brother Calvin and our littler brother Jared. Oh, here it is. I got it. You found it. Yeah. Now, PDF. God bless you guys. Yeah. See ya. And my God wish you bless you as well. You too.
or shrinking them. The screamer. The screamer. <laughs> I like that. <coughs> Um, I'm going. I can't deal. I'm tired. Okay. Oh. Uh, this is Tim in Treeport. Got a couple quick questions for y'all. Uh, get off the air. Uh, one of them is what time exactly uh, each night does, a uh, Tuesday night, does the uh, study seven, on World seven, Saints uh, happen? 7 30. Eastern. Okay, that'd be 6 30. 6.30 Central. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, second question. Y'all still on for uh, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time uh, to do uh, mass deliverance at your church. Are you going to be able to uh, uh, do this, you know, do this where uh, somebody get on the phone and, uh, and uh, tie I, into it? I might be able to. <laughs> I might just bring you in <laughs> the uh, – he had one of the smartphones. Okay. <laughs> or go and bring it, bring the place into Zoom through a smartphone. I don't know. We'll figure it out. If not, definitely the following month, November, I'll have the church back up and running in a, in a proper way that you get it. It'll be live. Yeah, you know, we only did okay. it once. We only did it once live, and people on three different continents were getting delivered that night. That was pretty awesome. Pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, Kelvin, did you get your email? I, I sent it. Me? I don't have a computer. don't have email. Yeah, I got it. I got, book, I got books on everything from the Bible to hunting Hitler. Don't ask about the book hunting Hitler. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but I just don't have, uh, I just don't have uh, an email. I don't have a computer. I don't, uh, like messing with them things. I kind of like having books hey. in front of me where Tim. I can read over and over again. Oh, one last question. Tim. One last little question. Uh, you, I think you said this morning you got that little pamphlet I sent you uh, 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 on the book, In All Thy Word. Did you get to look at it or get it yet? The what? I sent it through snail mail. You probably ain't got it yet. I didn't get no book yet. I just got your uh, your letter that you did the uh, the whole back of the letter you wrote stuff about the King James and okay it's just a pamphlet not a book but a, but but a pamphlet it's not a booklet it's not you know I it's not even so much of a track it's just a pamphlet no, inside I, of it I didn't get it. if you ain't had time to open it I ain't gonna blame you because I know you're a busy man no 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 I didn't get it yet I just got my my uh, a whole box of material from uh, AV, you know, from publications. Oh, AV publications, good. There would be the uh, tracks on. Uh, and, and, uh, the, and the book, New Age. really, yeah, the book that really explains the King James Version. Oh, you got the 700 page book? Yes. Oh, good. You. Uh, you will learn so much to it. Uh, tomorrow, I'll tell you what the page to look at first. It yes, happens sir. to do with the. Yes, it happens. I'll yeah. call you tomorrow, Tim. I'm just tired now. I gotta go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Uh, but I appreciate. Yeah, you did a, a good, great, and wonderful thing by getting that book. You uh, did a great, you, and wonderful thing for waking me up again with uh, the. Uh, the tracks because I bought them too, so people will hand them out to people. Okay, yeah. Uh, give them to say born again Christian to use modern translation. Now go to bed, get some sleep, uh, have okay, you a little bit you. of hot chocolate. Get a little bit of hot chocolate, then you can go uh, to sleep. Sugar free of the cars. What? Okay, sweetheart. Thank you so very much. Yeah. I'm muting myself out. And God bless you. That is one faithful friend. All right. So uh, hang on a second. I don't hear you anymore. What happened? Muted. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. This is Tim. I just unmuted myself. You ever give me? I'm from Louisiana. 
uh, we have the poorest education system in the Arklatex area. So go ahead and say what you were trying to say. You there? Yeah. Who who are you talking to now? Okay. I am. I am okay. No, we. we you know, I think I, I think we all got mixed up there. I'm. What I'm trying to say right now is, and I what? think it's Proverbs three. No, Proverbs. Hang on a second. Let me find it. I don't want to give no false addresses here. Proverbs, where are you? Proverbs 3, I'm pretty sure. Or it might be one Proverbs. I got my Bible by my bed. Uh, no, it's not that. I'm not okay. All right. Proverbs three twenty four, not seven. Here we go. Three twenty four. Ready? You ready for this, everybody? This is for everybody. Good. This is a proclamation. Here we go. That. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sweet, for sweet sleep. And with that, God Good bless night. you. Good night. God bless. We'll see you in the morning. Yes. Sweet.